So the other reasonably well-liked question was from uh, Jason Poliak. Um, he asked a question about FPGAs, which I actually answered um, to some extent in the um, in the comments, not realizing it was an Ask an Expert, excuse me, an Ask an Expert question. Um, but he does <coughs> talk about how does processor architecture affect a CPU's performance? And he mentions a new um, AMD chip. So I, I don't know if I can answer that question explicitly. I don't don't know the details of 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 of, um, of the architecture you're talking about there particularly. But I just wanted to use it to very briefly talk about the future of CPU architectures in general. And it's we're at quite an interesting time because I mean, over the last few years. We've seen a real dominance of, of Intel CPUs in the marketplace. They've been very, very successful. And the majority of supercomputers uh, have been using Intel CPUs. There was also uh, GPUs coming in, accelerators from mainly from NVIDIA. Um, so there was, some, there was some competition there, but largely it was dominated by, by Intel. However, recently there's been a couple of developments which are probably worth following. One is um, AMD. AMD, um, until recently, quite a big producer of CPUs. The predecessor to Archer called Hector actually didn't have Intel CPUs, it had AMD CPUs. They're the same, um, they, 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 they implement the same instructions, so you could you can have a program, you can run it on an Intel CPU or, a, or an AMD CPU, um, the x86 architecture, but they're a different manufacturer. And they've come back in with a, with a processor called Epic. Um, so so um, Jason mentions the AMD Ryzen, but here, Epic. I've got a picture here. Um, sorry, the Wikipedia page. And, and I mean, the initial um, the initial results seem to be this does seem to be reasonably competitive in the HPC market with you know reasonably good memory bandwidth and, and floating point performance, and I think reasonably um, uh, competitively priced. So we we could be, see you know AMD chips coming on the market. And it's always good to have competition in any area just to get you know more innovation, keep the prices down, but also to drive innovation um, amongst everybody. And I think it was really um, you know, it was AMD's entry into the, the market, which which gave Intel a boost. Who suddenly, you know, notched up a gear and, and, and went ahead, and now people are coming back. So, so AMD um, is um, uh, something to watch watch on, and their, their their chip is called the Epic. The other um, chip that's very interesting is is from Cavium. Um, we may have mentioned in the course that you know power consumption is a real big issue, but the, you know the, the place where that is really really um, a, a, of key importance is in, in devices like your mobile phone. Okay, I have a cheaper Android mobile phone here, and you know the, the processor and E has to be very power efficient for two reasons. One is it's very hard to get rid of heat here, and but B you want your phone to last as long as possible on a single battery charge, and um, the people who have been really at the forefront of that for, for decades have been ARM and they don't actually make processors they design them so so if you want to make an ARM processor you lease the design from ARM but you know they're, they're incredibly innovative in driving this forward and um, until recently they've the power, although there's been a lot of talk about using ARM processors for HPC because of their very good or very low power consumption the performance simply hasn't been good enough but there's new architectures coming out and there's something called the Cavium I think it's called the Cavium Thunder X2 the name has changed a few times but you know th there are um, ARM, arc, ARM processors coming out, which are being used in supercomputing, and there's a, a Cray machine, um, which is effect effectively the same as Archer, but instead of having Intel CPUs, it has these new ARM uh, CPUs in. And again, they seem to have very good memory bandwidth and hype and, and, and good um, and good floating point performance, but also very they designed for very very low power. So that means a lot. You know, you can get lots of them, pack them densely, and such like. And so they're, they're two things to really watch. Again, um, you know, uh, accelerators are carrying on. Uh, Nvidia GPUs, other people are making GPUs, will carry on into the future. Um, Intel's foray into the sort of accelerator market. That there are many core processors. The the Xeon Phi architecture doesn't seem to have taken off, uh, probably because they didn't have. I mean. Accelerators such as GPUs are very successful because you know there's this multi-billion dollar gaming market and multimedia market supporting the development of GPUs and then they can be sold for HPC. If like Intel, you've got a many core chip, the, the Xeon Phi's had you know, hundreds of cores, it's very difficult to, to have a business model there if you don't have a you know commercial market for them. And I've, we've discussed a few times, it's not clear that your everyday user with a laptop wants more than a quad core machine or, or an eight core machine. So I, I'm afraid I didn't answer your question exact, exactly, but I think it is an interesting time. Keep an eye on the future and what Intel are doing, of course, but also what's happening with um, accelerators. But these two new um, 
avenues of classical CPUs, but from different manufacturers. AMD, a different manufacturer, but still of the same architecture, it's the same instruction set as Intel chips, x86, but also ARM processors coming in and being used for HPC. So I hope you found that interesting, and I hope overall you, you enjoyed the course. Thanks.